in the heart of industrial manufacturing, where raw steel transforms into critical rigging components, lies a process that's both brutal and precise. Today, we're taking you inside a large rigging factory to witness the complete forging process of giant bow shackles, the heavy-duty connectors that hold together cranes, ships, and massive construction projects worldwide. The process begins with high-grade alloy steel rods, typically 42 CRMO or similar carbon steel. These aren't ordinary materials. They're engineered to withstand forces exceeding 50 tons. Workers measure and cut the steel to precise lengths. Each piece is inspected for surface defects because any flaw at this stage means failure under load later. The cut pieces are cleaned to remove oil, rust, or contaminants. This ensures proper heating and prevents impurities from weakening the final product. The steel enters induction furnaces where temperatures reach 1200 degrees Celsius. This is critical. Too cold and the metal won't flow properly. Too hot and the grain structure breaks down. Workers monitor the color carefully. Orange means it's warming. Bright yellow white means it's ready. The entire piece must heat evenly, which takes 15 to 20 minutes, depending on diameter. Pyrometers confirm the exact temperature before any forging begins. Now comes the raw power. the glowing steel is placed into a hydraulic forging press, generating over a thousand tons of force. The first strike begins bending the rod into its characteristic U-shape. But this isn't a single motion, it's a series of calculated blows. Each strike from the ram gradually curves the steel while the operator rotates the piece. Sparks cascade as scale, oxidized surface layer, breaks away. The metal flows like thick honey under this immense pressure, taking shape blow by blow. The operator's skill is crucial here. Too much force in one spot creates weak points. Too little and the shape is inconsistent. This takes years to master. After multiple strikes, the basic bow shape emerges, but it's rough and needs refinement. Here, massive hardened steel punches drive through both ends of the U-shape, creating the holes for the shackle pin. Timing is everything. The metal must still be hot enough to punch cleanly. The press drives through with tremendous force, and the slug of steel is ejected from the other side. Each hole is punched oversized because the metal will shrink during cooling and further processing will bring it to final dimensions. Forging creates excess material called flash around the edges. This must be removed. The shackle goes into a trimming press where sharp dies shear away the excess. The flash falls away, revealing a cleaner profile. Grinding wheels then smooth the areas where flash was removed eliminating any sharp edges that could become stress concentration points. 
Precision machining brings the shackle to final specifications. CNC machines bore the pinholes to exact diameter, with tolerances measured in hundredths of a millimeter. The holes must be perfectly aligned, or the pin won't seat properly. Surface finishes are applied. Some shackles get shot peened to increase fatigue resistance. Others are machine smooth. Every surface that bears load receives special attention. For screw pin shackles, threads are cut into one ear. For bolt type shackles, the holes are left smooth for a separate bolt and nut assembly. The shaped shackle now enters heat treatment, the process that gives it strength. First, it's heated again to around 880 degrees Celsius in a controlled atmosphere furnace. This normalizes the grain structure disrupted during forging. Then comes quenching. The shackle plunges into oil or water. The rapid cooling locks in a hard martensitic crystal structure, but this also makes the steel brittle. To fix this, tempering follows. The shackle reheats to a lower temperature, around 550 degrees, then cools slowly to reduce brittleness while maintaining high strength, the perfect balance. The shackle pin follows a similar but separate forging process. Round bar stock is heated, forged to diameter, and the ends are shaped. While red hot, a hardened mandrel punch pierces the pin's center, creating the hole for threading or bolt passage. Multiple strikes with progressively larger mandrels expand it to near final diameter. The punch must enter perfectly centered to prevent eccentric holes that cause uneven thread engagement later. Upset forging creates the shoulder. Localized compression forces hot steel to mushroom outward into a shaped die cavity. Multiple controlled strikes build the enlarged diameter while operators rotate the pin for uniform material flow around the circumference, preventing cracks from uneven expansion. After forging, precision facing operations machine the shoulder surface perfectly flat and perpendicular to the pin axis, ensuring even contact with the shackle ear. CNC lathes control the shoulder diameter to exact specifications, maintaining critical clearance with the pinhole. The machine shoulder then passes through alkaline washing tanks where high pressure sprays remove cutting fluids and metal particles. Acid pickling follows, stripping away any oxidation. After rinsing, the shoulder undergoes tempering at controlled temperatures to relieve machining stresses while maintaining hardness. Processing the pin. 
thread rolling machines cold form the pin threads through compression, work hardening the material for superior strength compared to cut threads. The displacement of metal rather than removal creates unbroken grain flow along thread roots. CNC lathes turn the pin shaft to precise diameter with tolerances measured in hundredths of millimeters. Go-no-go -go thread gauges verify pitch and thread form accuracy. Pin length is machined to specification, ensuring proper engagement depth when assembled. Grinding wheels finish the bearing surfaces to mirror smoothness, minimizing friction during installation. The pin undergoes final tempering to optimize the balance between strength and ductility. The completed pin moves to multi-stage washing, where high-velocity water jets blast away any embedded metal particles from the thread valleys. Acid pickling removes the thin oxide layer that formed during tempering, exposing fresh steel. In the galvanizing bath, special attention goes to ensuring zinc penetrates all thread roots and valleys. Operators may agitate the pin or use ultrasonic vibration to eliminate air pockets. The threaded sections receive slightly thicker zinc coating to compensate for wear during repeated assembly and disassembly cycles. Processing the bow shackle. The galvanizing process requires careful handling. The shackle is suspended to allow complete drainage of excess zinc from the pinholes. Withdrawal angle and speed are critical to prevent zinc pooling in the curved sections or creating uneven coating thickness that would affect dimensional tolerances. Acid pickling comes next, with the shackle positioned vertically so acid flows through both pinholes, removing all scale and oxidation. After neutralizing rinses, tempering relieves residual stresses from machining and prepares the metallurgy for optimal toughness. After heat treatment and machining, the pin threads into the shackle body completing the assembly. Workers verify smooth operation and proper fit. From raw steel to certified rigging hardware, each giant bow shackle represents tons of pressure, precise temperatures, and decades of metallurgical knowledge. These forged connectors will work in the harshest conditions, lifting shipping containers, securing loads at sea, supporting bridges under construction. Thank you for spending these 15 minutes with us inside the remarkable world of industrial forging. Until next time, Stay curious about the engineering that holds our world together.